Hello, I'm State Representative Tony Berkeley from the 82nd District and welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Brad Miller. I'm joined today by State Representative Tony Berkeley, who serves the 82nd House District, which includes Defiance, Paulding, and Van Wert counties, as well as part of Audley's County. Representative, good to have you on the show again. Glad to be back again, Brad. We're going to talk about some of the uh, legislation that's been uh, keeping the State House busy, um, including some of the things that you've been uh, most active on. We'll start with uh, Senate Bill 1, which deals with water quality. The people in Northwest Ohio obviously remember um, the uh, situation last year in Lake Erie near the Toledo area with the uh, algae blooms. Um, so with Senate Bill 1, one of the uh, components of the bill regards uh, application of fertilizer and manure on frozen ground. Can you kind of tell us how that plays into the bill? Yes, uh, actually it started a lot uh, last General Assembly with uh, House Bill 490 uh, and it's uh, proceeded uh, into this uh, General Assembly. So it's, it's, we've had it on our radar for a, a substantial amount of time and we wanted to really uh, vet the process, make sure we're doing the right things and, and getting the bill right. Uh, we we uh, introduced to House Bill 61, uh, and then now we've incorporated that into Senate Bill 1, and it is passed out of uh, uh, committee and uh, uh, passed the House. And, and so we uh, uh, knew that this was uh, an issue that uh, needed uh, some attention, uh, some clarification on what was acceptable, what wasn't, and what we want the uh, uh, agricultural community and the environmental community, uh, what, what it wants to look like uh, going forward. So uh, it's a, an important bill that uh, we've, we spent a lot of time with and we're uh, uh, really uh, hoping for good things uh, to come out of uh, the process. Uh, what particularly about the, the fertilizer on the ground, what, what should people know about that part well, of the bill? Well, there's, there's several things that uh, this bill does and one of the things it does is uh, uh, prohibits uh, in the Maumee Valley watershed uh, which is the, the Toledo area uh, watershed uh, it prohibits uh, frozen ground application of fertilizer under uh, under uh, uh, certain conditions there are uh, exceptions uh, uh, naturally uh, one of them is uh, the ground doesn't stay frozen all winter long and there's uh, the ability to, if they have the ability to incorporate uh, during that time, then it, uh, it's acceptable. If there's a, uh, a growing cover crop uh, underneath, uh, maybe a snow covered, uh, that's acceptable and it, it will uh, allow the nutrients to uh, stay on the, on the property. Uh, it's also uh, one of the things that with corn stalks, if there's uh, large corn stalks on the, on the property, uh, that is an exception too. So uh, it deals with uh, uh, frozen ground and uh, prohibits that uh, application. So uh, that's just part of the bill, but uh, that's a major component of the bill. Uh, another part of uh, uh, another provision of the bill um, deals with uh, monitoring the levels of phosphorus in the water. Can you talk about what impact phosphorus has on the water supply and uh, why that was uh, a portion of the bill? Uh, we've known for a long time that phosphorus is a major contributor to the algal blooms that are happening uh, on uh, not only Lake Erie, uh, but also Grand Lake St. Mary's. And some of the things that have been implemented in the Grand Lake St. Mary's watershed, uh, we are carrying those forward into uh, uh, the Maumee Valley watershed and trying to uh, uh, implement those in this bill. And it's a process that we're going to go through a, a timetable uh, of how uh, these actions are going to take place and, and progress over time. And uh, we want to remember that uh, this isn't a magic bullet that's going to stop everything on a dime. It's uh, been a progression of uh, multiple decades uh, of applications and, and other contributors. Uh, so uh, we're starting on that road to, uh, I think, recovery and, and bringing uh, Lake Erie uh, back to what it uh, uh, can potentially be. And it's a, it's a great resource that we have currently. We want to keep it. We want to uh, make it uh, more valuable than it uh, currently is. Uh, finally, one last uh, 
thing to talk about on this bill. You obviously represent a very agricultural district. Um, there were parts of the bill that deals with some compliance protections and exemptions for farmers. You may have touched on this already, um, but can you talk about some of the, the ways it impacts farmers? Sure. Uh, currently, uh, if you are a uh, what's called a CAFO, uh, concentrated animal feeding operation, uh, you are already have a uh, manure management plan in place, and if you don't follow that plan, then there are repercussions for not following that. Uh, what this bill does uh, with regards to uh, those that are maybe just under that uh, threshold of uh, being a, a CAFO, uh, it puts them on a path to a manure management uh, uh, plan uh, that uh, will give them an opportunity to come into compliance. Uh, if you are uh, what we call a medium uh, operation, then you have uh, uh, a year plus the time uh, from the governor's signature uh, to come into compliance. If you are a, a small operator, then you have basically two years plus the time uh, that the governor signs it into uh, uh, law. Uh, so we are giving them an opportunity to uh, develop those uh, manure management plans uh, to uh, be good stewards of the property uh, that, they, that they occupy. And also uh, it gives an opportunity for, for people like the soil and water conservation districts to help them develop those plans. So we're, we're also uh, providing uh, opportunities of where to get them uh, the plans and how to implement them. Uh, so we don't want to uh, say 90 days from the time the governor signs it that uh, you have to have all this in place because that would develop chaos. And, and we don't. We want a smooth transition uh, and how how they can implement the, their programs. We'll move on to a, a different but very much related uh, subject. At the beginning of each General Assembly, the Speaker, and, and this GA we have a new uh, Speaker, uh, Cliff Rosenberger, he appoints members of the General Assembly to uh, various committees. He asks you to serve as uh, Vice Chairman of the Agriculture and Rural Development Committee. Again, very uh, appropriate for the district you represent. Um, because you represent such an agricultural district, what, uh, what has been your response to that, or what's it been like to be the vice chair of that committee? Well, I was uh, uh, very appreciative of the speaker uh, in my appointments this year. Uh, it was, uh, ag is my district. Uh, that's what we do in the 82nd district. We are heavily agriculture and, and proud of that. Uh, we enjoy living where we do. We enjoy doing what we do. And uh, being vice chair of the committee, Representative Hill, which is the chairman, uh, and I uh, get along great. Uh, he's, he's a real down-to-earth guy uh, also, and uh, he's a full-time farmer, and he, uh, we complement each other. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that uh, we uh, enjoy is uh, uh, being in the rural communities. Uh, we don't necessarily like the big city life, and so it's, it's a, a good mix for us. And we, we bring those perspectives to the Agriculture Committee uh, because it's the number one industry in our state and we want to preserve that and so I've uh, really enjoyed working with uh, Chairman Hill and uh, I, I think uh, we can make some pretty good progress for uh, our number one industry in Ohio. Um, it's certainly been a very busy committee um, largely because of the legislation we just discussed. Um, as part of that process, the committee actually traveled up to your district in, uh, to Van Wert to hold a, a committee hearing kind of on site. Um, what is the importance of that? Do you, do you find that it's, it's valuable to get out of Columbus? Obviously, as you just said, you kind of uh, like getting a, a away from that sometimes um, and taking the issues directly to the people. Yes, it's, uh, Brad, it's, it's a great, great point. When uh, we kind of started that process uh, last year of kind of taking the, the committee on the road and, and just seeing what, uh, a kind of an impact we were having on rural communities. And uh, so I was happy when uh, Chairman Hill uh, decided that uh, uh, we should take this committee on the road and uh, just see what uh, the public was, was wanting to uh, see in a bill. Uh, when we went to Van Wert, uh, it was a very good experience, I think, for the, the committee to see uh, those members of the community, because we're 
let's face it, uh, when they're two and a half, three hours away from Columbus, it's not as easy for them to uh, get to Columbus to testify before a committee. And uh, it was a perfect opportunity to have, a, a, we had a packed house in Van Wert and it was, it was great to hear uh, members of the agriculture community uh, coming forth and saying what uh, impact they were having on uh, uh, our state. And then we were, had also had the opportunity to go to Sylvania up near Toledo uh, and we heard from the environmental community up there uh, and ha have some of their concerns. And, and when you think about uh, the bill that we just passed uh, unanimously and uh, to get uh, uh, the agriculture community and the environmental community on board with one bill, that, I mean, that's like parting of the Red Sea. It just doesn't happen every day. Uh, so we're very proud that, uh, of this uh, legislation that's, that's going forward and, and we gave uh, both opportunities uh, for uh, both sides to hear the issue and uh, I think we came up with a pretty good bill and uh, we're just uh, uh, trying to implement that at this point. Um, you obviously talk to and meet with constituents and local uh, uh, elected officials uh, in your district. What was the feedback like uh, following that committee? Well, when you have a, uh, a community that is such uh, far away from uh, Columbus, they were really appreciative of, of our efforts to go up there and, and see, uh, uh, let them voice their opinion. Because many times uh, when you uh, uh, don't see the uh, direct impact of, of coming to Columbus, and you just feel isolated. And I, I think we made them feel like they were included in the process. Uh, and I think they were, and so that, that I think that's appreciated when we uh, can reach out to the uh, rural communities. We use that as a, kind of a transition to talk about some of the other committees uh, you serve on, um, namely f the Finance Committee, uh, which is working on the uh, main operating budget. You serve on the Finance Committee and also the Subcommittee on Agriculture, Development, and Natural Resources. Can you kind of explain the difference between working on the Standing Agriculture Committee and then the Agriculture-Related Subcommittee on Finance? Sure. It's a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> there's a, well, when the, the, the main operating budget comes over, we try to break it up. Uh, it, it's just uh, too large for really one committee to really uh, uh, take a, uh, a bite out of it uh, so it's a little bit better, a, a little bit at a time. So we broke it up into several committees, and, and one of the committees that was the uh, subcommittee on rural agriculture, and uh, what they do is uh, they take every budget that uh, relates to agriculture, for instance, OSU extensions budget, uh, would come uh, before that committee. Uh, we would look at it, uh, they would testify before committee, uh, justify what they're wanting in their budget, and then uh, when all those committees are, are done, they bring a recommendation back to the full House uh, Finance Committee, and, of which I'm a part of also. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very active committee, so I've been a pretty uh, busy beaver these uh, first, uh, uh, few months and, and then the, the uh, Ways and Means Committee, that's, that's another one that I'm on uh, that uh, uh, deals with tax issues. Uh, there's a lot of proposals uh, as far as taxes in uh, the governor's proposal. Uh, so that's another uh, area that has been very active uh, going forward. So we're, uh, 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 not much moss has been growing on me this first six months of the year. Um, what kinds of issues do you see coming down the road on any of these committees that might be of particular interest to the 82nd district? Well, one of the bills that I'm working on is currently House Bill 80, and it has to do with agritourism. Uh, the purpose of that bill is to uh, promote uh, uh, some activities that normally the, the general public would not get to participate in. Uh, for instance, uh, if you are a, uh, in the farm community and, and you just want to bring kids out from the city uh, to see what actually happens on a farm, and, uh, but you're apprehensive about doing that for fear of liability, because uh, there are some things that are inherently uh, uh, in a farm that, that maybe uh, uh, you might not be accustomed to, uneven ground, uh, you know, twisting an ankle, and, and you just don't want uh, to have uh, maybe 
be uh, liable for uh, a twisted ankle or something like that. So what this bill does is, is tries to uh, provide a bit of, of uh, immunity from uh, prosecution for uh, things that are inherently uh, natural to uh, being in rural communities, uh, whether that's a, a, a hayride or a, a, a U-pick uh, strawberry patch uh, that you want to come out. Uh, you know, those are the type of things that we want uh, people maybe from uh, that aren't familiar with agriculture uh, to get a hands-on uh, touch with uh, uh, you know a, an animal or, or something uh, that maybe they just uh, weren't exposed to before a petting zoo or, or uh, we just want to provide opportunities for the rural community to uh, uh, develop in this area. We have about a minute left at the end of uh, each episode. We have our guests to share with their constituents back home how they can best reach you here at the State House. Yes, uh, just contact my office. I'm uh, at the uh, uh, Rife Center. Uh, my phone number is 614 644 5091. And uh, my email is rep82 at ohiohouse.gov. Uh, we are uh, constantly uh, looking at those and uh, enjoy uh, actually making contact with uh, people in the community. Uh, we want to hear from them. Uh, we track uh, you know, what uh, responses are and, and we try to respond accordingly. Uh, we really enjoy uh, working for the citizens of the 82nd District. And I, I'm, uh, I, I'm really pleased that they've provided me with this opportunity to serve. It's, it's been great. Representative, we're all out of time. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope to have you on the show again soon. Okay, thank you, Red. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. Thanks for watching.